Here's my question. All right, so Fire we're away. we're gonna move into a uh, an illustration or okay. uh, or metaphor. You think about a chess player. Sure. Right. He's sitting. So there. many moves ahead. Right. Yep. Oh, don't I'm get sorry. ahead of me, Mark. <laughs> sorry. Yes. I'm. My yes. I apologize. <laughs> Welcome to How I See It with me, Mark Pratt, and Justin Sternberg. This is a podcast that works to counter cultural polarization through thoughtful conversations. Getting in my position. (laughs) Locked in. (laughs) Ready to go. All right. So here's here's my thought. Yeah. Oh, we're not just doing off the cuff. You're prefacing me. You're pre- this, I mean, this is off the cuff, off okay. the cuff, prefacing you. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, one very polarizing topic in like Christianity is this idea of God's sovereignty, once saved, always saved, mm. predestination. Mm-hmm. Are you ready to go? Go deep this morning. <laughs> I can do that. I can do that. Sure. Um, are we gonna? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Cool. Cool. Are no, I was, I was thinking from a scriptural context. Are we bringing it? Right. In? So, I'll probably quote. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You know, just paraphrase. Paraphrase. You know. Sure. It's gonna sure. be how I see it. It's gonna how I see it episode hmm. of how do you see it, Mark? Because the Bible very clearly uses oh. language about free will. Sure. And our ability to make choices and very clearly tells us to make choices, right? Sure. Um, While at the same time, it very clearly talks about Mm. God's sovereignty and that he's in control, he's in in charge. And if you read Romans 9, I mean, basically Paul is saying some things are made for destruction and some are made for glory. Mm. And, you know, he uses the metaphor of um, like uh, a waste basket. Some things are made to be a waste basket mm, or something like that. Sure, sure. He's talking about the potter and how yeah. you know some vessels, right? Vessels think are you. for fit for glorified purposes, and yes. others are made for destruction. Yes, yes. And even when I think about that, I think about you know it's um uh, here again the brothers. You know that he actually liked one brother. He actually you know in an Old Testament dynamic. Yes. Yes. The, Esau I lo- or, or Jacob I loved, Esau yes. I hated, or that whole that perspective as far as it it seeming as if he had a favorite or he didn't. You know, yeah. with with a purpose in mind. Yep. Yeah. So I'm I'm yep. hearing where you're coming yeah. from. That, that's what's coming to yeah. my mind. It's like how can a loving God kind of choose one over the other? Right. So my, I kind of want to just play with some ideas sure. in terms of like, why, how, et cetera, mm. um, and kind of get your thoughts. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm good. I'm, yeah. So one struggle that I get, that I hear a lot from, from people and, and myself as well is mm-hmm. this idea that, well, everyone, not everyone, most people believe that God is omniscient. Sure. Right, and so omniscience. Um, define omniscience. Right, yep. go ahead. Is knowing everything. Sure. Right. 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 And another, uh, what do we call these definition? No, uh, attributes. Attributes. Attribute. Sure. Another attribute of God that most people agree with, without uh-huh. without any kind of argument or whatever, is his omnipotence. Sure. Right. Which the is power. His all powerfulness. Sure. Right? So if he knows everything and he has ultimate power, right? Yeah. Um, and yet in our language, we can create these paradigms that say, is he big enough to be able to do right. this? You know, is he it's big like, enough to make a rock he can't pick up? Pick up, right. sure. Yeah, yeah. All that stuff that yeah. kind of, from our human understanding, we wrestle with. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And that's, 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 what, that's what I want to do. Wrestle a little bit. I'm all for it. Um, so here's here's where we get stuck, right? We? Ooh, I'm not yeah, sure we, I'm stuck yet. We, but... <laughs> oh, as people. We as people who get stuck. Sure. 
<laughs> sure. Um, you think about this fact that he's omniscient. He knows everything. Mm-hmm. Um, does he know everything in the future? All possible opportunities? What do you think? I believe so. I believe so as well. Here's my question. All right. So Fire we're, we're, we're going to move into a uh, an illustration or, okay. uh, or metaphor. You think about a chess player. Sure. Right. He's sitting So many there. moves ahead. Right. Yep. Well, don't get ahead of me, Mark. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. I'm, my, yes. I apologize. <laughs> no. Okay. So it's chess a player. genius chess player. Best chess player in the world. And the reason they're so good is because they know every possible move at mm. any given point. Mm-hmm. Right? Sure. So... Key difference, key or a key, a key important detail here. Sure, they don't know your mind. Correct. Okay, but they know every other variable in terms of that chessboard. So, the minute mm. the game starts, you move your piece, and this person mm. says, "Okay, I just calculated every single possible, you know, mm-hmm. path that this thing could take, which is impossible. I mean, right. billions and billions of." Options. Option. Like, just, it's mm-hmm. ridiculous, right? But they can do it, right? So they churn mm-hmm. through, just, 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 like, computer or whatever, and they go, okay, based on what he just did, I'm going to do this. Now, because I just did this, all of those things shifted, right? All those op- potential future options that you might take and that I might take, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. All of them shift. But now I've made a decision, right? Sure. And now you react to that, right? Yep. And you may do exactly what I thought you were going to do, or you might do something that's like, wait, oh, I see, he did that, and now calculate all the possible, right? Recalculating. Right, recalculating, Recalculating. exactly. And the game goes on and on, and he crushes you, right? Because he knows all the possible moves. Sure. You're just living in his world, right? I got you. It's it's no offense to you, Mark. I don't know how good you are at chess, but this person is basically a a computer, This is our analogy. Yes. Yes. So, obviously, that's very powerful. Would you say they are Mm. all powerful? Hmm. That's where I would have to. I would wrestle with it from a human, computerized dynamic of what we know. And I think that's, for me, I think some of what we wrestle with in that context, what I, I respect the question, but it's like, I want to follow the the vein, but I also recognize that we don't always understand. So yes, re- ask ask me the question one more time. I want to clarify. Yeah. So the question is, if this person knows all possible moves you might make and therefore mm-hmm. can create a plan based on that, mm-hmm. would you consider them all powerful, omnipotent? <laughs> In the game, specifically in the game, in the game I would have to say yeah. specifically in the game of chess. Yes, if that was possible, I would consider that omniscience of knowing, his the ability yeah. to know. Omniscient. What about omnipotent? And uh, there again, uh, it it would be for me to define what power is. I mean, sure. I don't necessarily. I when I think of chess, I think of it as a mental uh the ability to know a person's thoughts Hmm. you follow me i wouldn't necessarily consider that all powerful i would consider that all knowing and that would be how that would be why i would decipher i would say yeah i would consider that person omniscient the ability to know but I just it's it's a I'm just thinking about it from that aspect yeah. of power because I don't necessarily see power equated with chess. Right. Right. That's fine. You That's, you yeah. follow me? But yeah. I see power as as creation mm-hmm. to be able to have the power the ability to speak uh, something into existence. Hmm. Not that we don't have a certain ability, you know, our, our words are tremendously power. They're, you know, they're nuclear, but yet I can't necessarily make a solar system Mm -hmm. just by my words, but that's how I would equate, you know, that would, that would be something that I would attribute to omnipotence. Yeah. Does that make sense? I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to 
<laughs> you know, it's part of the wrestling. So right. yeah, that would be how I would see it. I would say that person is omniscient to be all able right, to so know. That that all works. Okay. If 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 I'm okay to keep going. You're okay, yeah, yeah. you're okay as far as I'm concerned. So let's up the ante. Okay? okay, sure. Not only can this person know every possible move, mm -hmm. right? And all the calculations to know if this person does this all the way through, right? Sure. To the game being to done. the end. Every single possible. Predict move. every move yes. that I would make. Pre no, not predict. Oh, no. React Excuse me. to every move you make and have the whole game completed, no matter which path you take. Well, see, Follow I would, every single possible path. I wouldn't see that as omniscient if a person is reacting. Mm -hmm. I would see that as something less because I would believe that person would need to know. Right. Right. You follow me? So he, Not here's, react. Here's, here's when I went up the ante. Okay. Right. And I hear where you're coming from. Right. I'm seeing, where, yeah, you're good. Roll with it. Not only do they know all the things to do based on what you will do, uh -huh. they know what you will do. Yeah. Not what you might do, what you will do. Yeah. Right? Once they have that piece of knowledge, what you will do, sure. along with all the possible alternatives alternatives sure but they know the one the one that, that i will choose will do. Yes, yes exactly are they not now in complete control of the game well how can they not be because and here here's where i'm coming from that person would still have the ability to make the choice so i wouldn't say they were in control because each person has that choice and the, what are we calling him? A professional? What are we calling this person? The guru. The, guru, the, guru. the chess guru <laughs> knows that, knows it, but it doesn't necessarily take away the player's option to choose. Mm -hmm. My option. Sorry. Sure. Sorry. The guru knows it, but it doesn't take away my option to choose mm -hmm. each and every time. And if I want to start my first move with my knight or a pawn, it makes no difference. I still have that right. choice. Yeah. I, I'm not disagreeing. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. I'm not uh, that's, that's just me making a statement. I guess what I'm saying is. What are you saying? Is your choice an illusion? Hmm. Because. Sure. Again, if I know every possible move, mm -hmm. and I like, I've already determined I'm gonna win the game. Okay. Yeah. And so I know that's a good that's a good illustration too. Yeah. The guru wins the game. Yes. The guru <laughs> wins. Yeah. And not only does he win, he wins with the castle being here and the bishop being here and your mm -hmm. king being here. Like there are some pre predefined parameters that we know the game will end in because mm -hmm. they're it's written down. Sure. Right? In order to accomplish that, those mm -hmm. things, mm -hmm. based on what you're, I know you're going to do, mm -hmm. hang on, I'm still, I'm, I'm calculating. Yeah, I see it. I see it. Well, I'm good with it. I'm good with it. For me, it's just hard to distinguish from, from being all-knowing, past, future, present, and all-powerful but yet not free will being a, a an illusion. Sure. Which I'm okay with, just, just so we're yeah. clear. Yeah. I, 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 that, I'm not upset by that. No. But that's like, that. that's what, that's my question. That's my that's, wrestling. That's yeah. the. That's the conundrum mm -hmm. for you in that context. Yes. Because it seems as if, if he knows it, it somehow diminishes your ability to choose i see i don't think it i wouldn't diminish. use the word to dim, diminish. Okay, okay i would say what is the conundrum then help me understand that better. um for me it's not a conundrum i just believe it's a, a <laughs> an illusion that i'm happy to live by and i'm commanded to, okay i'm commanded to live by this illusion so it's not that there is a and for all intents and purposes in my life mm -hmm. 
I meant to walk in that understanding that I have this free will. Sure. But I have this even better knowledge that says, yeah, but I know the truth, which is mm. you're in control. Mm. And quote unquote, I can't mess up. That being said, mm. I know what it feels like when I'm walking away from him and I don't want that. Like, mm -hmm. I have my free will to do what he promises in his word will, you know, my life will be blessed and I will have a, a better relationship with him and all these things are better as mm -hmm. a result of my choices. Sure. But it's also like I have this comfort or this mm. trust, this belief that, Mark, you're not going to mess it up. You're not going to mess mm -hmm. up God's plan. I'm not worried about you living in your world, messing up his plans. Yeah. Now, let's go all the way to the top. I'm not worried about the president messing up his plans. I'm not worried about the, mm. the world order that controls everything that people talk about messing up his plans. Mm. Sure. I know he knows what they're thinking, what they're going to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and it, whether, you know, you get down the the semantics of whether mm -hmm. he's like whether that's an illusion or not it really doesn't matter at that point but um i don't know what do you think and, and that's what and i guess i guess what comes to mind for me is i think about it from as i interact with people some people will say you know some people have a hard time saying we are blessed to be here in America because it sounds as if we are somehow enlightened or higher. They, they, they don't like that. They, they see it as a luck. They want to refer to it as I'm lucky to be here because in their mind, they're wrestling with that dynamic that says, okay, why mm -hmm. am I here? And someone else is someplace else. Yeah. You know, and they wrestle with that because from from what I understand their perspective to be, it seems as if I've been put in a better spot and that other person has been put in a lesser spot. Yeah. And how could that happen mm -hmm. from a loving God type mm -hmm. thing? And I, and so I, for me, I don't I don't I I wrestle with that thinking on their part because it's like i can recognize there is a plan there is a choice and it doesn't mean that one is better or worse because i i believe they have their differences you follow me mm -hmm. i i i i think there's i think there's definite advantages to being here but i also think you know in america type dynamic but i also think there's mm -hmm. so many more distractions mm -hmm. that can kind of and, you know, I see, you know, commercialism and, you know, and the ability to have wealth as being a blessing. Mm -hmm. But I can also see how in that free will, we can choose and many things we can put in place of God. Yeah. And uh, substitutions. Sorry, go ahead. No, you go ahead. You know, you were saying I. Uh, I, I'm feel very strongly that the uptick in depression, anxiety, all these mm. things directly correlates with the level of comfort we have. So yes, we're mm. so blessed. But the fact that we don't have to dwell every single day on how am I going to get food in my children's mouths mm -hmm. leaves me with more existential problems to solve. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so we are blessed, but... <laughs> I would be uh, ignorant to say I am more blessed than the the village in Africa that, you know, a, a missionary just brought Jesus to and they have this mm. incredible joy. And every day they work their freaking butts off mm. to provide for their family and, and, and not die, right? Like mm. to not, And yet they have a bigger smile, a better, a bigger mm. existential joy than than I could ever know in my yeah. life. Because I don't know the pain they've known. You know mm, what I'm saying? Sure. And so I know that's, uh, we're definitely in a sidebar at this point. But that, that I think when we talk about being blessed, blessings are um, personal. Sure. Right? And yeah. so there are people who live in this blessed country who are cursed. <laughs> They're just miserable. Mm. They cannot find joy. And they have yachts. 
valid point. And, right. it, and, it, and that, that's what makes it similar for me is and not even necessarily a sidebar mm -hmm. because it is that ability that we have to choose a free will mm -hmm. and, and God can still use that, mm -hmm. you know, and I can choose to take wherever I am mm -hmm. and granted that, my my if i grow up in a different place my view of god is so would likely be very different mm. than if i grew up in the united states of america absolutely you yeah. follow me yeah and so that being said from my perspective i i'm probably in a i'm going to be from what i understand in agreement with you in that process that all of it is part of that greater plan so it's not about one being better, one being worse. There is a plan that says there's a purpose in it all. Mm -hmm. And our minds aren't able to always recognize it. Even, even like right now in this, you know, it's like I don't recognize the purpose in mm -hmm. my father-in-law's circumstance and, mm -hmm. you know, where Chris and I are at and, you know, mm -hmm. living you know, living separately. Mm -hmm. We're not separated, of course, you know, we're still by God's grace connected, but it's like that becomes the wrestling. It's like, okay, God, what's the purpose in that? Mm -hmm. And I, and I think so often mm -hmm. in the midst of a circumstance, it's easy to quite, it's, it's, it's human nature, I would say to question mm -hmm. because we're caught in that middle ground. And I think, you know, that's, that's where, or anytime when we're, when we're stuck, when we, whether we're thinking we're stuck, whether we're feeling we're stuck, you know, in a situation, I think that's the difficult part because we recognize there is a choice. Mm. And, and in that moment, that choice is very real. Mm. Yeah. And it's, and it's, yeah. and it's, you know, at times palatable, we can just, you yeah. know, it's like, which way do I go? Yeah. Because she's there and she's doing exactly what she needs to be doing. And yet I'm here and we feel this distance and, uh, you know, I'm not saying I feel it more or less than she does, but yet, you know, yeah. I are, we're just on such different ends yeah. that it becomes difficult to understand where each other are at. Hmm. But ultimately this is, this is for me, the grace in it is being able to recognize there's a purpose and a plan. Mm -hmm. And whether I, whether I make wise moves that basically say, I, I check my own emotions and I don't blame and I don't, you know, get angry at people for no reason. I don't be, well, I, sometimes I do become a little grumpy, but what's that? I'm sorry. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think that's the, in that, in that moment is 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 where I'm at to be able to recognize and step back from it all and say, okay, God, what is the purpose in this? Mm -hmm. Because I'm not better, no one's worse, that kind of thing. But yet your love for all people is able to know the moves they're going to make. And the guru is actually still reflecting his love for us. Mm -hmm. by the plan mm -hmm. and ulti yeah. and ultimately whoever makes the choice whoever makes the decision from the you know governmental level to the local level to the personal level you know it's what i experience what other people around the world experience is still part of that love even if we're not able to see it mm -hmm. based on the current circumstance mm -hmm. yeah i think of um I mean, I think of uh, The Hiding Place with Corey Ten Boom. Mm. She wrote a book and she lived through the Nazi Holocaust and, you know, went through terrible situations there. Yeah. Um, like just reading her book, there was <laughs> obviously times that she said, I cannot fathom God having purpose in this yes. terrible place, in this terrible situation. I just... And yet her sister, a lot of the book is her just talking about how beautiful her sister's faith was mm -hmm. and saying, I'm just barely hanging on to the coattails of my sister's faith. 
wow. at some point. Yeah. Yeah. And yet we know her as a giant of faith. Yeah. Know? She's the one who, after getting out and the war ending, she ended up traveling the rest of her life mm. and speaking. And I mean, for us now and her in her books, mm -hmm. there's no doubt to that purpose. Yeah. You know, hindsight. Hindsight. Yeah. Yes. And she would never choose that path. Yeah. I would never choose that path. Or are you thinking about, like I said, the, the people in Africa who, if they could choose to have born in a, be, be born mm. in America, mm -hmm. they would, of course, choose that. Mm. Right? I would rather have that pain of depression than the pain of these blisters on my hand and whatever. Right? Like, yeah. it just gets really... I don't know. We'll say interesting. <laughs> no doubt. And it, and it, and it, I and here again, I think so much of that comes from our ability and in that moment, in the moment where the and and here again, I don't I don't want to simplify this. I want to mm. I want to recognize there's a depth. Yes. to every person's experience. Mm. You follow me? Mm -hmm. To where and, and it, so cuz I don't yeah, my concern is that I come across as arrogant and mm. and yeah. not having empathy. Me too. So that I want I want to recognize that that's not where I'm at. I want to mm. recognize that no matter where an individual is in the midst of a trial of mm. a of a difficult circumstance, you know, that moment um there's a it, there's a terminology um that will there's a it's actually a theory gestalt you know and yeah. yes and and basically it is it is those things that are in the forefront of my mind it's like you put your hand in front of your face you know and it's very difficult to see you if you know or the mic or anything like that because it's it's about you know um, the sum total is greater than the whole type thing. But we have these things that come into our view and it's difficult to see the forest through the trees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, once the tree is in front of us, it's hard to see the rest of the forest. That's, that's kind of what that means. And I think when we're in those trials, it's hard to look back at times and say, okay, this is where God was faithful in this situation. This is where God was faithful in this situation. And he's still just as faithful now mm. with this tree right in front of me as he will be tomorrow's trees, that kind of thing. And I, and I think as humans, that becomes the difficult part mm -hmm. is to be able to recognize the, the journey or if you will, the video versus the snapshot. Mm. Because so often I hold up, I'm, I'm in the midst of the snapshot. I'm living out mm. this moment. And sometimes it's difficult to recognize that there's a purpose and, it, and there's an entire video. And at the end of the video, mm -hmm. you know, the guru wins. Mm -hmm. And that guru winning mm. is to everyone's benefit. Mm. Yeah, another illustration of that that I've thought of many times in my own life in terms of exactly what you're saying is, is art, this mm. giant canvas on the wall. And it's all about how, how much you're zoomed in, right? If sure. You zoom, I hear what you're zoom saying. Zoom in far enough. There's nothing to see for, for as far as you can see, it's black. Yeah. It's dark. There's, there's nothing but dark. It's just mm. dark. It's a dark painting. It's a dark, art it's just the artist is dark right mm. and yet if you zoom out far enough mm -hmm. and are able to see the whole canvas yeah uh that could be a shadow of a beautiful tree right or it yeah. could be what you know the nose of a beaver <laughs> <laughs> right like yeah no i hear depending where you're on from. how far you zoom out it could be a speck mm. right yeah um, or how far you were zoom zoomed in in the first place. And I think that's that big, huge canvas that represents 
past, present, future. Sure. The past beyond what we know. Yeah. And the future beyond what we know. You know, as far as it stretches, we don't know how big that canvas is. Yeah. Because we didn't create it. We we can't see it. We're, we'll never be, well, I don't know, never. Hopefully someday we'll be able to travel and, it. I don't know. And, but. and here again, it's interesting as I think about it in, our, in, a, in a how I see it. You know, I think at times... You, you mentioned the beaver's nose and everything's dark. I also want to recognize that some people are in a spot or might be in a moment where they see yellow. Yeah. And everything's bright mm -hmm. and everything's... Yes. And yet that can change as I move along yes. the tapestry. Yes. You know, yeah. and, and I think yeah. that's important for us us to understand. It's like, this is where I'm at today is momentary. Mm -hmm. And that's why we talk so much about how I see it, right? Because it's this sure. idea that conversations are so important. And to, for me to say, no, you're seeing it wrong. It's all yellow. Ah, you yeah. just need to believe better that it's yellow. Or open your eyes and see that it's yellow. And let me just explain to you why it's yellow. And yellow, 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 yellow. yellow. And you're like, um... No, right. <laughs> You're wrong. And You're I think, so wrong. Sure. You know? And I think we can do that with people who are in their dark spot. Right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. You can be like, just believe better and just have more faith and just, yeah, it's not dark. You you just have to change your mindset. That's right. Positive mental attitude. You'll and, be in a yellow, you're in a yeah. yellow spot and you just don't you see just it. You don't know it yet. You yeah. Know, you just gotta fuck up, you know? Yeah. 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 But and it's like, that, no, the reality is you are in a dark spot. Yes. And no amount of yellow talk is going to fix that. That's correct. But. I'd agree with that. And it, and I, and I think if we want to go to the free will dynamic, it's easy to say that person mm. chose that. Mm. If we're going to really yes. wrestle with the agree, yeah. you, you follow me, that I mean, person's there because yeah. they did this, this and this. Yep. And if they didn't do yep. that, they'd be in a yellow spot just right. like me. Right. Yes. And so there in there I think coming back to the point <laughs> it go, it go it does go to that aspect of okay the purpose versus the free will. Mm -hmm. And can I make uh healthy choices and still experience darkness in my life? Right. Right. Can you? Yes. 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 No it doubt. It can happen. Yes. So because, the reason it, why. Go ahead. Ah, you were going to say something. Yeah, it was. Because I, I I, don't think we're given, I don't think it's God's design to live in a utopian sy right. system. Someday. You know, because, someday. Not but today. right now there's a purpose. Right. And, and mm. today is, and even mm. in that in what you refer to as the someday utopian, you know, there's still going to be, there's still going to be work from my yeah. perspective yeah. because there's a purpose in it. Yeah. And I think, you know, um, this ability to wrestle and, you know, uh, when I think of, uh, you know, just God's interaction with people, you know, and, and putting them in spots where they have to wrestle with him. I think that's a part of the mm. the dynamic and the purpose that mm -hmm. says, okay, yeah, mm. trust me, mm -hmm. and yet you're not going to understand it all. Right. You're, my mind, I'm not saying your mind, but my mind isn't able to always comprehend. Because mm. otherwise, if we could comprehend it all, we'd be omniscient. Right. But yeah. instead, we're yeah. created in his image with certain abilities mm -hmm. and we're you know and even and it was, as we've shared before there's so much of god reflected in male and female mm -hmm. that you know we just no one person has it all no one mm -hmm. person can understand it all mm -hmm. and that's that's the beauty of mm -hmm. what we're mm -hmm. offered from my perspective and I, and i think so often it is in those momentary hurts that i lash out and I start to say, okay, this God isn't loving. This God doesn't care about me, you know, and if he's so whatever, fill in the blank, 
you wouldn't have this and this and this and this. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think that's where, that's where we run into the, the conflict. I think that's where the the breakdown happens to where mm. you say, well, that's why I don't believe that. Yeah. That's why I believe in free will. And I believe, you know, uh, Arminian is like that whole idea of like Calvinism versus Arminianism. Sure. This idea that, no, it's up to me. It's up to my, you know, it's, it's free will a hundred percent all the way, at, you know, all yeah. the way up and down. And uh, because I cannot grasp that. Yeah. I cannot allow that to be true. And I think when you venture towards the other direction, you say it has to be true. So where am I wrong yeah. in how I think about it? What am, how am I viewing God that doesn't allow this to be true? Yeah. And, and how is that wrong? How can, how can all the things I believe about him to be true still be true? And that also be true yeah. that bad things can happen. He can allow it. He can, predestine it use it use it yeah, yeah. exactly well, I'm, how, and 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 that's where I, i'm a i'm a calvarminian <laughs> Cal Cal you know that's to good. the to, yeah, yeah. to the point of recognizing yeah. yes it's all of because of who we get stuck <laughs> I don't have to tell Megan. There's a name for what she is, <laughs> Calvarminian. <laughs> because it be, and and I think that's that's the beauty of it. it yeah, that that continuum mm -hmm. is the is the ability is I see that as being like black and white. Well, it's got to be black or it's got to be white, and we can recognize mm -hmm. that no. You know, if we're going to those far extremes, yes, that's, I mean, but that doesn't mean white doesn't exist, mm -hmm. even if I'm all the way on the black side. Mm -hmm. And even if I'm on the white side, I'm not assigning that, but you know what I'm saying? It, it doesn't mean that black doesn't exist. And I think that's where we get stuck is when we think because I'm here, you know, in light gray, then, then black doesn't exist. And if you're if you're of the the black thinking, the dark side thinking, then something's wrong with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you just don't understand. And I yeah. and I think that's that's the beauty of scripture from my perspective is mm -hmm. it's all true. Yes, it's big. Yeah. God's big enough for it to all yeah. be true. Yeah, and that's okay. Yeah, for us. Yeah. I agree. It's not that, you know, he's some angry person that is, you know, has his, you know, God sized fly swatter looking to swat right. you because you did this. And therefore, you know, you're you're going through and I, I'm not making light of anyone's situation, but, you know, that you're going through this current sickness or this, you know, physical or mental you know, sickness, and that's somehow God punishing you mm -hmm. for choices you've made, mm -hmm. and you know that kind of thing. And I, I mean, I'd still recognize that yes, the choices we make mm -hmm. would be yeah, reaping and sowing, reaping and yeah. sowing consequences. Mm -hmm. I, I believe there are consequences, mm -hmm. but just because mm -hmm. I'm experiencing doesn't always mean mm -hmm. that I've chosen poorly. Yes. Or sometimes it does, and when you receive the consequences for choosing poorly, those consequences, even in harsh, harsh I'm not talking about like, like I got off with less than I deserve. I'm talking about you're dealing with the real results, the mm -hmm. real consequences. Mm -hmm. Even those can serve as light points. Sure. As moments where we recognize a loving God who's... Hmm. who will not be mocked and mm -hmm. who is saying, I love you, but you will experience this. You will learn hmm. the the consequence for that action. Hmm. And there's a huge difference between condemnation there and saying like, well, I deserve this and, da, 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 and I must, you know, I have to walk yeah. through this and God's mad at me and I have to pay my, you know, penance or whatever. And 
recognizing that as a loving father who just spanked me mm-hmm. and he's going to hold me after mm-hmm. and he's going to walk next to me well you know while i cry you know yeah while i experience the pain of the consequence yeah and he's not sitting up there judging me and angry he's saying i did tell you mm-hmm. <laughs> you know i did yeah. warn you and uh i sent this person and i sent this thing in this circumstance, you know. Yeah. And uh I the reason I'm so you know very passionate about this particular part of the topic. I mean the whole topic really. Sure. But I I grew up in a church that was very Armenian, very mm. free will, very um it all hinged on my actions. Yeah. And so my blessings depended on my actions. My curses depended on my actions. My flat tire depended on, mm. you know, my actions. And, mm-hmm. you know, I've talked about this before, but struggled with pornography mm-hmm. when I was young. And so every time something bad happened in my life, mm-hmm. I could always tie it back to the last time I slipped. Mm. And I, I always did. I just said, well, this makes sense. Flat tire, I because I have that and yeah. I deserve this and I guess we'll just have to deal with this and you know maybe be- after I get through this mm-hmm. consequence uh, I can be close to God again until I choose poorly again and then I'll have to do this again and Yeah, it was this ongoing battle of trying to stay holy but not being able to do it because my free will is broken and I mm-hmm. like the flesh you know mm-hmm. and my theology shifted um, you know, I want to say early college and high school as I learned about this other side of God, yeah, this sovereignty, as I saw the white paint and I'd yeah. only seen black my whole life or whatever color you call it. I don't, it's not about wrong, right or whatever. It's about nuance Yeah, and learning that, oh, God is loving in this as well. Yeah. And he's sovereign. So somehow... Like there's this this wrestling, this somehow wrestling that yeah. I think no matter what illustrations we come up with, there, no, I hear you. you there will always be wrestling. I, I'm okay with that. I yeah. enjoy that. That's what this conversation well, is about. But. And and the thing I like about what you're sharing, and it kind of comes to my mind, is the aspect of I think sometimes we think learning is instantaneous. Hmm. You follow me? Mm-hmm. It's like I need to memorize this. I need to, you know, and. I'm, I'm, I want to be able to learn. I want to be able to, I all, I just want to be able to move through it. Right. And some of the learning that you're describing, you know, in that process of moving from mm. one extreme to, you know, a more general. I would say I went to the other extreme. Would you? And I would say that learning that you're talking about is a lifetime learning. Yeah. And I've come away from the other extreme to now I'm, I just. It's somehow in the middle. I've definitely leaned more Calvinism and more, but yeah. I, at the same time, I recognize free will and I accept that. And I, you know, it's like this. And so yeah. in that, in let's, let's go there. Then do you, in your viewpoint, have the ability to influence God hmm. or influence the guru, if you will, from your analogy? I believe what the Bible says, which is that he invites us into a relationship with him uh-huh. as a child. And so as much as I believe, <laughs> I think that, yes, absolutely. Gotcha. But I also think he knows what I'm going to pray to him about that thing. Hmm. He planted it in my heart to desire that connection with him so that I would pray, so that I would ask that question, so that he could Mm. move on my behalf. Mm. And so when he answers prayers for me, it's more than a, oh, I have a father who will listen to me. It's No, I have a father who's so good that he would plant those seeds of faith. Like, it's so Mm. much bigger for me. Mm. And even in the bad, to recognize like, well, I know the truth, Mm. that this is a dark spot on a big painting that's beautiful. Mm. I don't like it. Yeah. I don't want to be in this black. And yet yeah. I know there's purpose. And sometimes, and this is not to say uh, I don't struggle anymore because I know that there's purpose. No, in fact, the struggle is different. And I would say in some ways harder to say, 
I don't want this. Mm. I don't like this. Mm-hmm. I can't escape it. Help. <laughs> like, sure. Help me or help it. Like, because, yeah. and it is a desperate prayer that calls on his love and whatever. And at the same time, recognizing that there's a purpose. Yeah. And if he doesn't answer, there's a purpose. If I die because of the situation, well, good. <laughs> yeah. Like, there's a yeah. purpose. And I don't know if all that makes sense, but like. Well, it makes sense in the process of what we, what we did. Cause I think that's the, what you're describing is that process of coming to the end of willpower hmm. or free will that I can will it into existence. Whereas there is a God who cares enough about me that he won't necessarily let me build my own tower of Babel, if you will. Mm. He won't let me go that far to where Mm. he Mm. orchestrates circumstances to where I always have the option to come back Mm -hmm. towards him. And he's, And he's make he's he works that into my life in such a way that I can choose to continue to go my own way, mm-hmm. and I can even separate myself from him. Mm-hmm. But it's not that he's ever unaware mm-hmm. of where I'm at, and still continuing to mm-hmm. provide opportunity in that wrestling for mm-hmm. me to turn and be able to say, "Okay, God, yeah." This this whole life experience is bigger than me. And and I need your help. Mm-hmm. I need your help understanding. I need your help living. Mm-hmm. This is bigger than me. And I need your help with it. And I and I and I think you, like you're you're saying, I think so often people mm-hmm. get into that spot where there is a choice to choose or I'm, I'm here again, I'm thinking of Ernie, you know, again, and it's like this wrestling that I'm doing with, I, I, I'm having a difficult time praying that God takes him because mm. it seems in that moment. Yes. I, I recognize he's going to glory. I re- recognize he's going to heaven and that's best for him. Mm. But yet in my humanness, I have a difficult time saying God take somebody because mm-hmm. that's bigger than me. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so yeah, I wrestle with giving healing, mm-hmm. but then we hear, you know, so many people, well, I prayed for healing and God didn't answer that prayer. So mm-hmm. God doesn't love God doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. You follow me? Mm-hmm. And I, so right now in this moment, I can understand both sides of that equation mm-hmm. and it, I'm recognizing that mm-hmm. it's more complicated than, than my mm-hmm. small mind can comprehend. I think you're, I was just, yeah. I think when <laughs> when life gets tough, well, here, I'll, I'll say the inverse. Our theology is the strongest when we're most comfortable. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> it's sure. like we get it all figured out and then we live in that figured outness. And like, I know God, this is what he does and this is how yeah. it works. And I know you're living this way because that's what happened. And this is the, and I know yeah. this is this because of that. And then. Bam! I get smacked across the head with something with life. Yeah. And the things that were black and white, you got hit hard enough now, they now look purple. Sure. Right? Like, sure. Or whatever. You know what I'm saying? It shifts our perspective. It causes us to rethink. And I believe in hope and desire that that will be true of me the rest of my life. I don't want to ever yeah. figure it out because I know I don't. But there are times I feel like I've, eh, I've got a pretty good lock on it. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. I know who God is. Yeah. I know what he's doing. Yep. Yeah. 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 And then, the, like I said, in those moments where it's like, uh, I very strongly believe in his sovereignty, predestination, all these things. Sure. But then in those moments, it's like, help? Yeah. Can you? Will you? Yeah. Is that a thing you do? I don't know. But yet, you told me to pray. You said, give me the desires of my heart. Okay, I'm going to believe what you said. Sure. Right? Yeah. Despite knowing that you won't listen to me because you've already predestined whatever. It's like, no, 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 no. The Bible says this too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so that theology becomes a little less black and fades a little more into that gray spot mm-hmm. in the middle you're talking about, mm-hmm. which is healthy for me. Mm-hmm. You know, I can't speak for everyone, but yeah. Um, I also think too, like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. I, this is, I don't know. I kind of took a left turn in my thoughts, but 
we hear definitions of God. We hear, mm. like, he's called the Lion of the tribe of Judah, right? Sure. And yet we know that he's not a lion, mm-hmm. right? We know he's something much bigger than that. Sure. And yet a lion mm. is one representation sure. of who he is. And it, it provides a view into who he is. And the, the Bible has how many names of God? It's a lot. There's right? a bunch. It's, it's a lot. Yeah, no doubt. And yet we don't believe any single one of those as being the single name of God. Sure. And therefore, this is how it is because the Bible says it. Yeah. Bam. Problem solved. He's a lion. You know? Right. It's like, no, no, no. But it also says he's a lamb. Sure. He's the lamb of God. You know? Yeah. Uh, at least Jesus is. Right? He was the, yep. the, Jesus, the, Jesus the is lion as well, yep. right? Yep. Um, the point is we get so many facets into who he is yes. in the word of God. And free will is one of those facets that's mm. very a, a very clear cut facet through the word of God. Mm. Uh, and so I think when you look at that facet, to believe that's all it is, he's a lion, that's all it is, mm-hmm. is, I think, missing the point. And then when you see the other facet of his sovereignty, and he's in control, he knows exactly what's going on. He planned this from the beginning of time. Mm-hmm. And you hear this and all this, and that's the facet, right? Right. That My tendency was to shift from this facet of free will to this one, like no free will, all mm-hmm. predestination, God's sovereignty. And yet... This facet didn't go away. They didn't, this mm-hmm. this name of God wasn't removed from the Word of God. Yeah. Because I believed only in this name of God. Yeah. And so uh, there's that wrestling of saying, okay, there's something to this. And again, I think when we get to heaven, we're not going to look at him and see, oh, <laughs> he is a lion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. You're wrong all along. He's just a lion, you know. Um, and vice versa, like get to heaven, I'm not going to think oh it's just free will up and down all the way through or vice versa and um i think instead what's going to happen is we're going to mind blown you know no doubt oh it's that plus that plus that plus plus that and none of it it makes sense but it all makes sense and my (laughs) even redeemed mind whatever Mm -hmm. you know god Mm -hmm. transforms us in Mm -hmm. in when we get to heaven or whatever that looks like even that version of me is still going to be an image of him. And I'm sure. still only going to get a glimpse. But maybe for the rest of eternity, I get to mm. just keep walking around in this knowledge and learning more and more, just like I am now. Mm. But I'll never be him, therefore I'll never have it. I don't know, it's just so yeah, fascinating. Yeah. Because I'm in a... I respect the fact that, you know, on one end of that continuum as we talked about you know i'm a robot Mm -hmm. i don't have any choices i'm automatic Mm -hmm. you know you know and i and on the other end it's it's all willpower yes and i (laughs) never send me back to that end please and i and i and i just think about them you know on those continuums yeah and it's like I'm so thankful that it's not either or, Mm -hmm. but I get this opportunity to to, to do both and, and will I, will I wrestle with that part of me that aligns more with the robot at times Mm -hmm. or, and will I wrestle with that part of me that wants to choose free, you know, have this influence over God in a willpower, you know, type dynamic but I think part of it is this ability to recognize that neither one is most beneficial mm. and it can be both. And, mm. and there are, will be circumstances that will challenge me where I'll have to, where, where I will need to learn. Mm. It's, it's, it's interesting. Cause, um, this is, I guess the, the neat part for me. Is in, sometimes in in sessions I I operate by three C's, okay. And the the first C is uh, creating a context for change. And that's all about safety. In other words, a person isn't necessarily going to change unless they feel safe. Mm-hmm. Good. And I think that's the, when I can recognize that God desires is is loving and it. 
I am safe mm -hmm. with him, mm -hmm. even in the midst of my insecurities, even in the midst of the war, you know, raging around me, there's still a safety mm -hmm. and I can work and I can, I can wrestle. Cause I think the, 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 um, creating is when we're like God, mm -hmm. it's, it's the, it's the, oh, it's the working that I'm doing as I work through, you know what I'm saying? That, that to create that space, to create opportunity for change. And it, and it, for me, that's critical because it, it's, it's about recognizing that I'm safe with God. And then, I, then I'm able to allow him to challenge my personal patterns and cycles. Mm -hmm. And that, that C is about vulnerability and support mm -hmm. because I'm not going to change unless I feel safe. But when mm -hmm. I'm safe with who God is, mm -hmm. then I can be vulnerable and then I receive his support. Mm -hmm. And I can challenge these patterns and cycles in my life that say, no, it's this way. Mm -hmm. It's this way. It's got to be this way. And so I live in that cycle doing the same thing over and over again by my willpower. And then, you know, but as I'm vulnerable, then I receive his support. And then that support allows me to be more vulnerable. Be, and it helps me even get to the point of the third C is consolidation where I'm learning. And learning is the ability to compile it all, mm -hmm. consolidate, gra gather it together mm -hmm. in such a way that says, yeah, it's okay to be vulnerable with God. And sometimes the safest place is being vulnerable mm -hmm. with him in that moment when I don't want to be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And yet, unless I am, I don't feel his support. If I'm trying to do it in my own strength, I don't feel his support. I don't feel that um, compassion. He says, yeah, I'm here. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. You know, and, I, and that's, uh, that's what's going through my mind as well. I, I think about, you know, it's like, yeah. He, um, what's, uh, shucks. Uh, I'm thinking of a movie, Narnia. Mm. The end where the little girl's uh, watching Aslan walk away and she's there with Tumnus, is it? Have you ever seen? Oh, and it's it, been a while. Yeah. And she talks about um, him, God being good. But Tumnus says, he, yeah, he's good, but he's not safe. Right. You follow me? Yeah. And I would challenge that to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. Yes, because he, but. It's not always comfortable, and I think we under mm -hmm. I think we sometimes misconstrue safety with comfort, mm -hmm. and I think that's where comfort is sometimes counter to our growth, mm -hmm. and therefore we like comfort, and we and that's part. Of, I, I would even bring that back to having to relearn, you know, what is actually safe. Right, right. You follow me. Yeah, because because I can have I I can have as you were sharing and I, and I, I you know I can have this pornography mm. habit that seems safe. Mm. I can go there and I can it can seem as if that individual that image offers me acceptance, which is safety. You follow me? Mm -hmm. But I but that's unhealthy safety. Mm -hmm. And that's where I have to come back and, and, and recognize I need to create a space for change and relearn what safety actually is. Yeah, because we equate safety with comfort. Yes. And I think comfort is the trick, right? Yes. And, and we have to relearn safety to understand that comfort does not always represent safety. In the case of, like you said, pornography, it's comfort. It's right. comfortable. It's easy. It's whatever. But it's not safe. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes growth is the safest and it feels the least safe. Yes. Right? Exactly. Hmm. So, yeah. And I, and I think that's where we can trust. Because I, I think t trust is what we're actually looking at sometimes. Yeah. Trust, trust versus safety, complacency or comfort versus actual safety and we can recognize that god is bigger that there is purpose in it mm. even though it may mm. feel 
uncomfortably unsafe at times mm -hmm. as I'm relearning mm -hmm. what it looks like to trust God and the fact that he does love and care for me right where I'm at. It's mm -hmm. good. I think of, uh, oh, we're about out of time. Yeah. I so I think recording will stop in 20 seconds. That's so. true. So I think unless you want to wrap something no, up. Oh, that's good. This, that's good. There's way too much. Uh, all right. So this is how we see it. <laughs> hey, thank you for listening to our podcast. If you like how I see it, please do all the things that podcasts tell you to do. Subscribe, rate, review, follow us, uh, and or talk nicely about us on social media. If you want to reach out, the email is us at howiseeit.click. Yep, I said dot click, as in dot C-L-I-C-K. Please tell your friends about this show, and we'll see you on the next one.